This might be the most unique multi-chamber ocarina I've ever played. But does being unique make it worth getting? Let's dive into the Pendant Double Ocarina with Maximized Range by STL. STL's Double Pendant comes from their Ocar Revolution line of ocarinas. Basically anything on STL's website that's labeled Max Range is probably from that line. They generally all have some unique design that gives them extended range, like my Max Range Double that I reviewed a couple months ago. As you can see, there is an intimidating number of holes in this ocarina. It's basically two pendant ocarinas in one. Hi, Momo. The thumb holes both belong to the first or lower chamber. So you cover those. And then the four outermost holes that your index and middle fingers use, those are also for the first chamber. And this setup is basically a normal pendant ocarina in the key of alto C, though STL will call it tenor C. Then there's an additional sub hole for your right pinky. It looks like there's one for your left, but that one is fake. Not real, it's just there for balancing your finger placement. Then, for the second higher chamber, your ring fingers cover these two holes, and those function like the thumb holes in terms of when you lift them up. Then, the smaller holes on the inside are your main scale, in the key of soprano C. Because of the way this ocarina is set up, you can play almost the full range of both chambers at the same time. The only thing you cannot play, I guess at the same time, would be the B below the C on the first chamber. And that's because there's no B below the C on the second chamber, so there's nothing for it to be played at the same time as. This ocarina is somewhat awkward to hold. You kinda need to cramp your fingers and press down real hard to make sure your holes are fully covered. This is especially true for the ring finger holes on the second chamber. I kind of have to like press my ring fingers against each other for proper placement without air leakage. That said, within a couple hours of practice, you can get used to it. I got this ocarina a little over a week ago. I've been playing around with it pretty much every day, getting more and more used to it for this review. Though at times when playing, my fingers still do feel quite crowded, and I do occasionally get some leakage from not covering the holes correctly, losing the note that I want to play, especially in the second chamber. That said, this design is really cool. It's amazing that you can play both chambers a full scale plus two simultaneously. Momo's not going to be happy that I'm going to be playing high notes on my ocarina, so Momo, you should probably leave, okay? He doesn't want to leave. He wants me to pay attention to him. So keep in mind, I hardly ever play Pendant Ocarinas, so I'm going to let you know right now, this is not a sound sample from someone who is a Pendant Ocarina fanatic. I often have to rethink about the fingerings for Pendant Ocarinas because I play them so infrequently. Now at the same time, I gotta death grip this ocarina to play it at the same time. It is really tough. Before I play a song as a sound sample, one thing that I'm really noticing when I play this ocarina is that you really have to blow very hard on the second chamber. In the second chamber, when you're playing the high B, if you underblow, it just makes a really bad, like, squeak sound. So... Versus... Very often when I'm playing, that squeak just comes in and ruins the sound of what I'm going for. So just see when you notice that when I play a song. If your fingers are sweaty at all, it is nearly impossible to keep position with your ring fingers on the thumb holes for the second chamber. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. 
this ocarina is hard to play. <laughs> I know how to play pendant ocarinas. Like I wasn't even thinking about pendant fingering. It was just A, this ocarina is very hard to play simultaneously. B, it's so easy to let a little bit of air leak out of the holes and totally mess up what you're trying to play. If I press too hard with any of my fingers, it lifts up my knuckles and then releases holes from the first chamber. If my fingers get sweaty from gripping the ocarina trying to cover all of the holes, my ring fingers then slide off of the thumb holes of the second chamber. I get that you probably could practice through a lot of these things and get a lot of utility out of the simultaneous playing of this ocarina, but I can pretty confidently say that this ocarina is not very intuitive nor user friendly. But if you love pendant ocarinas and want a pendant that is also a double ocarina, this could be your favorite ocarina. It's just not the right one for me. One thing that really compounded my issues with this ocarina is that even though they say it comes with a fingering chart, mine did not come with a fingering chart. That made this ocarina a lot harder to learn. And uh, as you can see by my hair slowly getting more and more disheveled as this recording goes on, it made it harder to have good practice sessions with this ocarina when and I was kind of having to figure things out as I went. That said, it's really not that hard to figure out, just ring fingers are the thumb holes on the second chamber, and then otherwise it's a regular pendant with an extra sub hole for the first chamber to get the low B. But for an ocarina review, it typically only takes me 30 to 60 minutes to get well enough acquainted with an ocarina to be able to review it. This one took me a much more considerable amount of time, and I still don't think I'm at the level that I would like to be for a usual ocarina review. When I first opened this ocarina, I honestly really disliked it. The crimped way you have to hold it just made it really hard to cover everything properly, and that problem still persists to my playing now. The lack of a fingering chart also made it really difficult for me to learn, and I also just really prefer transverse ocarinas. Give me my 12 holes back. That said, the more I practice, the more I overcame a lot of these issues, and I did come around to at least appreciate that this ocarina could be perfect for someone, just not for me. So who do I recommend this ocarina for? I would not recommend the STL double pendant to most people. First, pendant ocarinas are less intuitive to learn in general than a transverse ocarina with linear fingering. Linear fingering meaning you lift up one finger at a time and it changes one note at a time. You ascend the scale one finger at a time, basically. Whereas pendants do not have linear your fingering. You cover the holes in different combinations to play a scale. So when you compound that with trying to play the same notes at the same time, it's a bit tough, but I do think someone could get used to this. If you really love pendant ocarinas and want one that more or less has double the range of your standard ocarina, this is perfect for you. In fact, this ocarina is also really lightweight, surprisingly small, and it does look pretty good. This ocarina does take a lot of getting used to, even I'm not very used to it, but I cannot deny that there is some seriously innovative design behind this ocarina. That said, for most people who want to get a double ocarina, I would just recommend getting a transverse one. Since we're talking about STL, we'll use this one as a visual aid. Transverse multi-chamber ocarinas are far more intuitive to learn and use, and there's far less risk of air leakage with your fingers. On that note, I do think it's really cool that you can play notes at the same time on this ocarina, but I do think it's more of a gimmick than anything in most cases. The Simultaneous note playing does have some use for some songs, but I would wager in over 90% of cases when you play this ocarina, you're going to be playing one note at a time. And if that's how you're going to be playing it, you'll probably have a better experience with a transverse multi-chamber ocarina for the purpose of extended range. In fact, I'm going to make a video discussing the strengths and weaknesses and gimmicks of all the relatively unique multi-chamber ocarinas that I have so that you can be informed when buying a multi-chamber ocarina. Stay tuned. Otherwise, while I don't really like this ocarina, I can't say that it's necessarily bad. It is right for pendant lovers. That said, because of the weird playability, the cramping of your fingers on the instrument, as well as the frequent air leakage, I would only recommend this for pendant lovers. Or someone who really, really wants a way of playing a full scale and then some at the same time. But if you do want an ocarina that can play a full scale in two octaves at the same time, you can also get the Coda, which does have linear fingering, albeit slightly different from most transverse ocarinas because this is not transverse. It's in line and it uses its own unique fingering pattern that more resembles a mountain ocarina than your typical like Night by Noble or something. With the Coda, it's very, very easy to play your notes at the same time. There's almost no risk of air leakage from like improper 
properly covering holes, and it's also made of plastic, so it's basically indestructible. I think the Coda is a better designed instrument than the Double Pendant by STL, but the Double Pendant by STL did come out around a decade before the Coda. I'll have links to both of these in the description, and I also have a full-length review on the Coda. That's my take on the Pendant Double Ocarina with Max Range by STL. It's unique and has a very cool utility as being a Double Pendant Ocarina. I really like that it can play notes simultaneously, but I just don't really like playing it myself. This ocarina is not perfect for me, but if you're a pendant ocarina lover, this could be perfect for you. Thank you to my patrons, especially my $5 tier patron Joshua. You can support me for as little as $1 a month on patreon.com slash Andy Cormier. Help fund ocarina education and reviews. Next, watch my review on the Coda Everyday Carry Flute. I think the Coda does a little bit better what the double pendant is trying to do, but it still has its flaws. But you'll have to watch to find out. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, comment any ocarinas you'd like me to review in the future, and I'll see you next time. Happy tooting!